So it's with my great pleasure to introduce you to Amanda Lauren. Amanda Lauren is an interior design expert and Forbes contributor. She also appears on Good Morning America and Cheddar to discuss interior design trends. In 2020, she launched an online course called Pitch Please with publicist Jennifer Jaden that teaches small businesses how to pitch themselves in the media. And in addition to this, Amanda has decor lines with Art Sugar and Elizabeth Sutton. So thank you, Amanda, for being here with, here, here with us today. Uh, it's a great pleasure for us. So the floor is yours. Hi, oh my gosh. So thank you all so much for being here. Welcome to the power of media for interior designers. I just wanted to thank everyone at 2020 Spaces for this incredible opportunity. To give you a little bit more background, I'm Amanda Lauren, I'm a creator, I'm a freelance writer, and I'm a host. I also have a stand-up comedy background, so I promise to make this presentation far more fun than what you're probably anticipating from your regular webinar online trade show content. I'm currently a contributor to Forbes, Reader's Digest, The Balance, Investopedia, Simply Recipes, and A Sweat Life, among other sites. I also recently joined Forbes Global Properties, which um, I don't have any articles on yet, but I'm very excited to get started with them. I've also written for Real Simple, My Domain, and Family Handyman in the design space. I'm a creator on Instagram. Please follow me at It's Amanda Lauren. I can also be found at pitchpleasepr.course.com. Um, and there are lots of fun little quick PR tips there. And I highly recommend following that account as well. I'm also the host of a podcast called Bougie Adjacent, where I've had on guests like The Home Edit, HGTV stars like Jasmine Roth, Bregan Jane, and Clinton Kelly. I've also had on celebrities talk to talk about their homes, including Garcelle from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, as I said, we I have an online course that I co-created with a publicist called Pitch Please, which is great for interior designers or any small to medium-sized businesses that wants to pitch themselves to the media without hiring a publicist. We also recently launched yesterday um, a new package called Help Me Pitch, which is a strategy consultation package. It's sort of a hybrid, and I'll be talking more about all of this later. Okay, let's talk about what we're going to cover here. Okay, what getting PR can do for your business, spoiler alert, a lot more than you think, ways to leverage PR to attract more clients, why PR is an essential part of your overall branding strategy, why real media can be more important to focus on than social media, the connection between traditional media and social media, the importance of building relationships. I should have five stars next to that one because it's extremely important. Whether you should hire a publicist or whether you should be pitching yourself, how to leverage PR to get more clients and make more money, and so much more. And we will end with a Q&A. So I know you're watching this from home. Um, maybe some of you are in your pajamas. These webinar things are always so strange. So maybe you're doing this because you get some sort of continuing ed credit from k and or maybe you were once featured in House Beautiful and you're wondering how you can get in again. But let me tell you something. If you're listening to this, you're super lucky right now. Sip on your coffee, matcha if you're on the West Coast, and get out a notebook, a piece of paper, your phone, whatever it is, and take notes. Um, I know you're going to be getting a copy of this presentation and it will be recorded, but trust me, I'm saying a lot more than what's on these bullet points. Take those notes because I am going to give you information that can change the course of your business. So let's discuss some benefits of being featured in the media. Bragging rights. Listen, let's be honest. It feels really good to be featured in the media. I can't tell you how often someone tells me that when I put them or their product or their brand into an article, how good they feel. It's like a little high. It's like a little dopamine hit. Oh, what did you do today? Ah, I got featured on Forbes. Seriously, imagine it, okay? It can give you that confidence boost you need to reach out to clients and go the extra mile. I mean, who doesn't like external validation? Really, hi, isn't that hi, just- Hi, Amanda. Amanda, I'm yeah. just sorry. I'm gonna just interrupt you. I'm so sorry to, to interrupt you in your flow. Can we maybe just stop sharing and then share again? I've just been getting a couple of messages that people aren't able to see your screen. I see it, but just in case, because it's, it's a number of oh, messages. Sure. 
That's so bizarre. I'm so sorry. Um, one second. Luckily, I don't have anything up here that shouldn't be up. One second. Um, so, but there should be a button that says stop showing screen right beside, and then we'll re-give you. It's not even opening up. Wait, go to meeting. Hold on. This is so weird. I feel bad for whoever has to edit this. One second. Why, ah, why is this not working? That's so strange. Hold on, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if, if there are some people that can see my screen and it just looks weird. One second. Can I like go to, it's, so I'm going to try. Oh, wait, uh, oh, wait. here we go. Webinar go control. Ahead. Sorry. Beautiful. Well, okay. I'm, I'm going to go to stop showing screen and then show screen again, I guess. Beautiful. Exactly. Uh, okay. So it was just in case a couple people had said, okay, now if you go to full screen. Can you see it? I can see it. And I just put it to full screen. Sorry about that. Perfect. You can I'm gonna continue. Just, you know, I'm going to just maybe I have to have, I'm just going to put that at the bottom. I know it's like a little bit. There we go. You know what? I'm just going to minimize it and hopefully it'll work. So please let me know if there are any more problems. Okay. Perfect. No problem. Thank you so much, Amanda. And sorry for interrupting your flow. No, no problem. No, pro I have like pages of notes here. <laughs> Perfect. So go for it. As I said, it gives you bragging rights. Who doesn't like external validation? That's really the whole point of the internet, to get external validation. But press also, it makes you more authoritative. Listen, I can create a website right now or change my bio on social media to say I'm an aerospace expert. I am not an aerospace expert. I am not even close. And I have nothing to back that up. But when you're featured in the media, it gives you something to back up your authoritativeness. When, not, let me ask, do you want to hire, pretend you're not you, pretend you're your client. Do you want to hire an interior designer or an interior designer that's been featured in AD apartment therapy and traditional homes? Also, people will find you who may not actively be looking for you. This is especially true if you're selling a product, okay? Now, let's say you're part of a Roundup. Now, a Roundup in, I don't know how familiar all of you are with um, writer's terms. So a roundup is an article that's sort of a list of things like most stylish coffee tables of 2021 or best Mother's Day gifts for moms who like decor. You're going to get sales from people who simply see this somewhere, see whatever you're selling, and they decide they want it, click add to cart. Also, let's be honest, image is everything. You're an interior designer. You're more than aware of the importance of how things look. Your job, after all, is to make things look pretty. When you're featured in the media, it impresses people. It's always an accomplishment worth talking about. I'm going to be brutally honest here and tell you what other people probably won't. Getting featured in the media makes you look way more important an accomplishment than you are in the eyes of the public and the people that want to hire you or buy your product. You might only be in business for a few years. You might not be where you want to be. You're on the road there. But having media placement will elevate you in the eyes of others. And now it's not letting me change the slide. OK, wait, here we go. All right. OK, I'm not going to talk too much about why traditional media is just as important, if not more kind of, than social media. Um, I think that they're both parts of the equation, but they're both they're both very different, okay? I like to think of Instagram as a public portfolio for you to share your work and accomplishments. Figuring out the content for your Instagram is so easy. I'm gonna give you a few tips here for that, okay? You already have the content. You just need to photograph it and post it. A before and after of a bathroom reno, the bedroom you refresh for a thousand bucks, all right? You can also use social media to share your PR accomplishments, which I'll talk more about in detail later. So here are the reasons why traditional media is something you need to focus on more than your social media. 
the entire world is not on Instagram. From the research I did, I Googled this, there are a billion, approximately 1 billion Instagram users, and there are 8 billion people on earth. So an eighth of the world, please don't quote me on that figure, is on Instagram. Your customer base also might not be looking for you on Instagram. Okay, sure, millennials and Gen Z might find you on Instagram, but if your work appeals to a different demographic, you really need to focus on traditional media. The algorithm is also constantly changing, which at least for me, I know is an endless source of frustration. I mean, listen, there are YouTube videos, Facebook groups, and so much on the internet devoted to trying to figure out the Instagram algorithm, you could lose your mind. Here's the other thing, media placement can help boost your social media following. When people see your work in an article, they may very likely give you a follow, so these two things really work hand in hand. Also, one of the major trends that writers are doing is embedding Instagram posts um, of things. So they may embed your Instagram, which is such, I mean, I always end up looking at the Instagram accounts and giving a follow to anyone whose work I like that's embedded in an article. Okay. Being featured in the media, it also just gives you an advantage over the competition. This is important. Now I want you to think about it this way, okay? Let's say you're trying to find a restaurant to go out to dinner and you're deciding between two steakhouses. They both look good, they're comparative, they're comparably priced, etc. One has been written about in top food publications. It has 4.5 stars on Yelp, okay, and 150 reviews. The other one, it has a website, it's fine, but not much else. Where are you going to eat? You're going to choose the restaurant that you have the most information about or has the most accolades. And if not, I definitely don't wanna go out to dinner with you. Wanna get verified? You need PR. Social media verification is extremely important for your brand right now. And it doesn't matter how many followers you have, I know people, a lot of people say that you need 12,000 followers to get the blue check mark. That's not true. So I have my blue check marks and not a week goes by when someone doesn't ask me how I got them because I have them on both Instagram and Twitter. The answer, if you're wondering, is that I've had them for years and actually got them pretty easily when the policies were a bit different. I was recently told by a publicist who's my pitch please um, business partner that you need at least eight to 10 pieces of media, including features to even be considered. So the power and importance of PR far exceeds surface level benefits. Having that verification truly solidifies the image of you and your brand, especially in the eyes of potential customers. How to use traditional media to build social media. So here are some helpful tips about using your media placement wins to boost your social media. You should always use your press clips as inline posts on your Instagram feed. All you need to do is screenshot, crop, and post. Tag the writer in publication. Don't forget to do a swipe up in your stories. Social media is a great way to get the word out about being featured in the media. It also makes you look more authoritative to clients and potential clients. This ultimately attracts followers and improves your engagement. Media features give you marketing material. This is a really big one that I feel like no one thinks about. Okay. Whether it's 50,000 people or 50 people, I assume most, if not all of you have mailing lists. If you're a small business, I assume that you might not be emailing all of your clients, current, former, et cetera, on a regular basis. There is no better way to reach out to past contacts than letting them know you were featured on a website, in print, on television, or even on a podcast. It doesn't matter if you renovated their kitchen six months ago. Listen, they could be on the fence right now about doing their bathroom, and this will give them a reason to get in touch with you. Or maybe you're just not on the forefront of their mind, but maybe they have a friend who just bought a new house, and it gives them something to forward on. It's like we're always, at least I know for my mailing list, I'm always trying to figure out 
what to send, how to send things. And this is just such an easy way to do it. So it really does more than you think. Okay, Wikipedia. This is a big thing that all the publicists talk about, okay? Having a Wikipedia page is another part of solidifying your business in the image of your brand. But you can't have a Wikipedia page without media to link to. This is just another reason why you need PR. The reason why Wikipedia works, so to say, and is considered accurate, is that you have all of these footnotes to verify facts. So that's why you need those articles. Sharp left. You were probably not expecting me to talk about SEO because it's a really boring topic, right? But it's one of those things that's necessary. So we're going to talk about it and I will try to make it as interesting and simple as possible because I am by no means an SEO expert, but I can tell you how it how PR can help boost it. Okay, so when you're featured on any website, they will include a link 99% of the time. There are some websites that will not link you, um, but they're very few and far between. So they will link to your website, social media, maybe both. Now, when I say any website, I mean, it could be a major publication, it could be a design blog, literally any website. The more links you have from the more authoritative websites, the better it is for you in the Google algorithm. Now, the term, the, sorry, the term authoritative refers to its ranking and popularity. So Forbes, for example, is considered more authoritative than a random design blog. That being said, I'm actually a big believer that no publicity is bad publicity. It's all a gift. If someone wants to feature you on a major website, a minor website, a blog, et cetera, um, these are all gifts and you should be grateful for them. Okay, now I know all of this with SEO is slightly technical and as a designer, you might not feel like this is part of your daily job. It's not the design part, but listen, it's the business part. SEO and Google ranking is extremely important for building your brand. And I just want to note too that the Google algorithm rules the world. No one is using Yahoo or GoDuckGo or any of those other search engines. It is Google. The SEO benefits of PO are enormous. Now I want to share a real life example with you. One of the businesses I featured in a Forbes article was this chicly designed. And by chicly designed, I mean someone really did a great job at Target. Um, it was a medical practice. So it really has nothing to do with what I normally talk about, but it was, it was actually a really fun article of like beautifully designed medical practices. I think there might have been a spa in there. This was like two years ago. So it was on the middle of the second page of Google search results for what it was it ended up moving to the bottom of the first page. It completely changed things for his business in ways that you cannot even calculate, okay? That is the power of SEO from PR. And you can spend thousands of dollars optimizing your website, hiring copywriters, etc., but a single link can have a bigger impact than all of this. I would actually say a better use of time and funds is probably PR compared to SEO if you have to choose. Um, PR can benefit your business in ways you probably didn't even imagine. No one thinks about SEO, but it really is such a game changer. So here's the big question. Should you hire a publicist? or go at it yourself. Okay, so from a writer's perspective, not having a publicist should not preclude you from getting PR. It doesn't matter who sends me the pitch and I get like a hundred, sometimes more a day. Some of the best pitches I've come across have been from people pitching themselves. Some of the worst pitches I've received have been from seasoned publicists from top agencies. So now that I have that out of the way, not everyone has the budget to hire a publicist. They can cost between two and $10,000 a month, if not more, depending on what your needs are. Now, that's not a small amount of money. Even if you're successful, it's, it's just not a small amount of money. That being said, a good publicist is worth the money because as you can see so far from this presentation, there's a huge list of benefits. 
I will also say finding the right publicist can be a little bit challenging. Now, I will say pitching ideas does take a bit of time. I feel like after creating a media kit and a template that you'll use for most pitch emails, if you can devote, I would say, 20 to 30 minutes a day to pitching, something will eventually hit. It could take a day, a week, a month, but if you have a lot to offer and you have a good pitch, as an interior designer, you've got this, you're creative, you can do it on your own. Oh, and by you, I also mean your assistant, um, your regular assistant, or even consider hiring a virtual one. Um, a lot of people that I've spoken to have virtual assistants just for pitching because it's a great way to sort of delegate that task without spending as much um, per month as you would on a publicist. But if you wanna hire a publicist, um, I should also say this too, I just wanna add this. Um, a lot of people who start out pitching on their own, and I mean, I talk to people about this every day, will may ultimately end up hiring a publicist in the long term. So if you're not exactly sure what you wanna do, try pitching yourself and see how that works, see, if your pitch, you know, see if your pitch is good, see if you get a lot of answers, et cetera, because you might not need to hire someone. But I will say, if you end up getting a ton of PR, you may say, you know what, this is going really well. I'm so busy with all these new clients. I'm going to now hire someone, which I can't say the name of the company that took my course because they asked me not to use it, but they're being featured in a major publication, a major, I would say, celebrity blog. That's not Poosh, okay? So that's a big hint. They're not there. It's going to be posted next month. And they decided because they are getting so much PR, they're actually hiring Kelly Catrone, um, who's a big publicist, for a few months just to handle all of what they are going to get from being on this site. Okay, so if you're going to hire a publicist, set a realistic budget. Remember, you get what you pay for. If you negotiate with a publicist that's a rate below their standard, you're not going to be at the top of their to-do list or they may cut corners. I'm sure if clients, this is the same with you, if ne clients negotiate with you and you go a little bit lower than, their, than your normal price, you're just not gonna put them at the top of their priority list. Um, and I talk to publicists all the time like, I don't think that agency rates are super negotiable, but there are a lot of great independent publicists that do have negotiable rates, but they always complain to me and then, you know, tell me they can't devote as much time to someone that's not paying their full rate. Now, this is sort of sneaky. If you don't know where to begin with this at all, or you don't have someone who can refer a publicist to you, this is what you could do, okay? Go to the websites of your competitors or another designer who you aspire to be like, click on their press tab. The name of their contact should be listed there. It might also be in their Instagram bio. I recommend talking to several publicists to see who understands you and your brand the best. When you're making an investment in this, you want it to be a wise one. Even if you get good vibes from the first person you speak to, speak to at least two or three people. They're, you're not bothering them, they're used to it. They do consultations all the time. I also recommend that you make a list of your dream publications, podcasts you want to be featured on, et cetera, and ask a publicist if their clients have gotten placements there. You want to hire a publicist with a strong relationship. Also, be patient. Remember, things can take time. Just because you sign with a publicist and pay them doesn't mean you're going to get a big feature tomorrow. For example, if you have a product, here's a perfect example. Okay, you have a holiday centric product, you're signing with a publicist in July, it might be a few minutes before you see results. Same as you focus with exterior, if you focus on exteriors and landscaping, things might be sparse around, you know, October. This is just the way the world works. Now, this brings me to one of the most important things about PR that I can share. Relationships are everything. 
if there's one thing that you get out of listening to this presentation, it's this. Whether you go about it yourself, hire a publicist, understand that you need to maintain relationships with writers and editors. That is your job. Now, when you were a little kid, your mom probably told you to write a thank you note when you got a gift. She was right. Always send a thank you email. It takes a minute and it leaves an excellent impression. You also need to share on social media. Listen, I get it. Not everyone has a huge account. It doesn't matter if you have five followers or five million followers. Tag the writer in the publication. If you can, do a swipe up as well. Um, if you can't do a swipe up, put the link in your bio or add it to your link tree or milkshake, which I am calling the new link tree. It's the same concept as link tree, but it's more design forward. Um, I think it's so much better. So I would say change your link tree to milkshake. Now, follow the writer and regularly engage with their posts. You don't have to stalk, but it can definitely help if you want to be at the forefront of their mind. You should also, here's a hot tip, view their stories because they'll post their articles and you'll get a better idea of their interests as well as what they write about. This is helpful information when you want to pitch them again. Now I'm going to share a story about how someone did not write a thank you note and how she never got featured again, and how someone else wrote a thank you note and did. Okay, this is why it's very important to put this into practice. So a few years ago, I was pitched an interview with a major influencer who now has over a million followers. She probably had close to a million back then. Um, she had fashion and decor lines at major department stores. By the way, I'm not going to say who it is, but it is not Cupcakes and Cashmere because I feel, I think her name is Emily Schumann. It's not Emily Schumann, because I'm sort of describing her, but it's not, okay? She was literally the most boring person I've ever interviewed. She didn't seem grateful that I gave her the interview. Um, and the entire thing was disappointing. But I, you know, agreed to do the interview. I am a person of my word. And I did it. I put it up. Not even a swipe up. Not even a restory no thank you nothing okay i mean this article was so good and so nice i was expecting her to like send me a gift from the line i even mentioned a specific throw or something that i like now i don't expect gifts but i definitely put it out there um i guess i was trying to manifest it um, I was extremely disappointed in this person. And a few, I would say a month ago, I got three pitches from a, a new publicist that she is working with asking me to cover a project she was working on. And it was actually a super interesting project that I would have covered. But then I decided to be honest with her and I said, she wasn't grateful, so I'm not doing it. Uh, but I wanted, I didn't want to ruin my relationship with that publicist, so I felt like being honest with her. On the other hand, there is a an influencer that has a great DIY product. And if you look at my Instagram, you might be able to figure out who this is. Um, it's a DIY flower arrangement kit. Now, normally I'm not super into anything plants or flowers even, or super DIY-ish to be completely honest. I'm terrible at DIYs. I'm literally the worst. I'm a great curator. I'm a great networker, not a great DIYer, all right? I put her in a roundup of Mother's Day gifts on Forbes, and she did an inline post. She storied it multiple times. She was so kind, sent me a thank you DM, was so kind, so nice, and she had a few hundred thousand followers. Even though this wasn't necessarily the kind of thing I wanted to write about, I just thought she was such a good human being. I'm like, you know what? I'm giving her a feature. Um, and it was, and I actually do think her product is really interesting, by the way. It's just not something that I might use, but I definitely recommend it as a gift. That being said, she got a feature because even though she had a huge New York City publicist, who also thanked me, by the way, um, she did the work, she established the relationship, and because and I wanted to give her something because it made me even more interested in her, her story and what she was doing. So that's why you need to write thank you notes. So you might think I don't have a million followers. I don't have this. I don't have 
just be a courteous, good human being, and you will be so surprised with writers how far this can go. So I want to share some cold pitching tips. Okay, here's a few. If you're cold pitching writers, it's very important to personalize your email to them, okay? Let them know you enjoy their articles, you find something informative. Tell them in a few sentences at the beginning of the email. Please also make sure you have their name right. I can't tell you how often this is a problem. Last week, I got three emails for Jessica. My name's Amanda Lauren. Now at this point, I will answer emails that say, hi, Lauren, because it's exhausting otherwise. But Jessica, not even close. Don't make the email too long, okay? They don't need to know your whole life story. Write a few sentences about yourself, your accomplishments, your business, and what you have to offer this writer. Now, you can also suggest the type of features to be a help with or a source for. For example, if you just designed a unique outdoor space, a powder room, a cute ch children's room. These are the types of articles that you can be a source for. Here's a technical tip. Do not send attachments. They can be problematic with email servers, especially when you're emailing to um, a media account, if it's like someone who works for Meredith or Hearst, etc. Okay. Instead, link to Dropbox or Google Drive. Both of these options are free. They're easy to use. Please make sure if you do use Google Drive that you set the proper permissions. I can't tell you how often people forget to do this. Then link to your media kit or portfolio. If you don't have one, Canva is great. It's free. They have, if you haven't heard of Canva, I feel like I see ads for them every single day. Um, they have a lot of great templates. I'm also a big fan of finding templates on Etsy. I'll use them for my social media. Actually, you can find things under $10. So it's all relatively inexpensive. Now you can hire a graphic designer, but I don't feel like that's necessary. Hello, Haro. Okay, I said the most important thing was relationships, but this is actually the second most important thing I am going to tell you about in this presentation. Listen, Haro is one of the best PR tools you can have and it is free. This newsletter comes out three times a day. This web, the website is helpareporter.com. Okay, I'm going to let you open up a new tab. Go to helpareporter.com. Now click back here. Don't stay on Haro. Don't say because I'm going to give you notes. I'm going to give you tips. Don't do it. Okay. I assume everyone has come back to this tab. Okay. Haro, it's a call for sources and products used by journalists who write for every major publication from AD to traditional homes, the New York Times, etc. Smaller publications use it well, use it as well. And in my opinion, where you get placement does not matter. As I said before, it's all a gift. And this is not just for interior designers, it's for every single industry. These are writers literally looking to give you opportunities, okay? All you have to do is respond, which I suggest you do as quickly as possible. I think the early bird gets the worm in this case. All you have to do is respond with a great pitch. So I wanna share a recent sample query that was on that I would say this is representative of many of the kind of things that you will find here, okay? Hi, I'm putting together a list of Amazon products recommended by professional interior designers, that's you, that make a home look so much better and are affordable. If you are an interior designer with suggestions and would like to be featured on Bustle, hello, major website, please let me know. Note, these items cannot exceed $50. Please provide Amazon links with your recommendations. Must be professional interior designer with link to biography slash website and portfolio. I mean, this these kind of things now listen you might do more high-end things there's luxury there's every kind of call i will see pitches i will see queries sorry for interior designers multiple times a day this should be something you're all doing twitter okay don't forget twitter 
Okay, it can be a great resource. A lot of interior designers may forego or forget this platform because it's not visual, um, but it's a great way to connect with writers. Um, many writers, including myself, will tweet when we need expert sources for articles. Sometimes because so much comes from Haro, I'll actually use it instead of Haro. You don't wanna miss out on these opportunities. You also don't need to really be an active Twitter participant, which I know it's kind of a political zone. It's kind of stressful. It's kind of a drag, but like you kind of need to be in the arena here. Okay. You don't need to have a large following. As I say, just show up for the party and see what happens. Now, I wanted to share a few quick things about why your email wasn't answered. Okay. Sometimes you shouldn't take, by the way, if your pitch or your response to a hard query doesn't get answered, don't take it personally. Most writers are getting 100 to 200 emails a day. Sometimes we just don't see the email or we just don't have time to open it. We also oftentimes don't have time to respond because we're not paid to respond, we're paid to write. And this is a logistical problem for every single writer. I've had interns, I've had assistants, I still never got to answer every email, right? But this is also an example of why you need to follow up, which I recommend you do a week or two later over email, depending on what it is. Here's another reason why. You were pitching a story too early. While you have to pitch editors or for print publications early, for websites, please don't pitch people Christmas decor or holiday gift guides in July you'd be surprised. I think two to three months is a sweet spot for holidays, okay, or seasonal things. Also, you could have been pitching a story too late. This happens all the time with publicists. They will pitch me a story for a Mother's Day gift guide like three days before Mother's Day. Sometimes your email ends up in spam. This happens more often than you probably think. And another reason why your email wasn't answered is you didn't target your pitch properly all the right friends in all the right places. It's important to reach out to the right people, target the right writers and editors, that's a mouthful. For example, if you have a line of wallpaper, you don't want to submit to, you don't want to pitch a smart technology writer or editor. At the same time, if you renovated a kitchen which integrated a lot of smart technology, you may fare very well pitching a smart technology editor. Check writers' bios and article lists to get a better idea of what they cover. They also might write for multiple sites. While there are subscription services like Cision or Muckrack, or there, I think there's one called Meltwater that people like that have these directories, I still think it's important to spend a few minutes investigating that writer. I'll also say, I think these, if you have a budget, I think that these subscriptions can be an unnecessary expense, at least in the beginning, because you're going to want to personalize everything and make sure you're on the right track. And while these databases are a great way to get emails, it's also not that hard to figure out writers' emails. Okay, never do that. Here's a quick way to burn a bridge you haven't built yet. Ask to be added to an article that's already been published. This is something else I get emails asking me to do every day. When we hit publish, we are done. There's no incentive for us to add you to something we've already finished. We literally don't have time to do this. Most writers don't have access to the CMS content management system, so we can't do this. Most writers find this request so incredibly irritating that they may not want to work with you or take your pitches seriously. Now, this is one of you of products. Here's a few quick notes about samples. Samples allow writers to experience your product in a way that copy on your website does not. Just because you send writers samples doesn't mean that they have to write about your product. There's no obligation. Getting a sample and having a good experience can start a relationship, which means you're on your way to getting press over and over again. Many writers will also do Instagram stories when they get press packages, um, just because it's it's a little bonus and it gives us content. If you, I, a smart thing to do, I would say, if you have a limited amount of samples or a limited budget, is to send to writers that write for multiple publications because they can only, unless you're me and you feature the same people all the time in roundups, 
look at my roundups on Forbes. It's a lot of the same people. I'm just kind of a loyalist that way. People can only feature you so much. Okay, so I wanted to talk for a minute about Pitch Please, which is an online course I co-created with a publicist. Um, it is a paid course. We do have a free masterclass to help you get started. To be honest, it's a little, we recorded that masterclass over a year ago, and I would say the first few minutes are sort of pandemic centric, but there's a lot of good tips in it that I wasn't, that um, I wasn't able to include in this presentation, but it is super helpful. You will learn how to craft your pitch. I even include real life examples of the best pitches I've ever received. I, you can learn, you basically also learn how to find the right writers and editors to reach out to and connect with them, how to follow up. This is very important, as I've said, people can get 200 emails a day. Um, and the reality of pitching, whether you have someone pitching for you or not, is following up how to form relationships with writers so you can get featured again and again, how to make a beautiful media kit, how to pitch to podcasts. This is a very important unit, um, which my the publicist, um, Jen, who I did this with, Jen Jaden, she is the founder of the Society Gal app, um, if you are familiar with that. Um, it's a great way, I, she loves podcasts, and she she actually recorded that entire unit herself, you get a really captive audience and it's a great way for people to know you and your brand personally. Also, I will say pitch please, it's easy, it's fun. You can take it in a day or break it up and do it over a weekend. We also recently started offering pitch strategy consultations so you can get professional pitching guidance and really hit the ground running. Um, what this is, is we will write pitches for you, um, give you different templates, share 20 editorial contacts, story ideas, etc. So there's more details about all of this on pitchpleasepr.com. Get in touch. You can reach me um, on Instagram, also at pitchpleasepr.course, Amanda Lauren on Twitter, at Amanda Lauren on Clubhouse. Uh, screenshot all this if you want to get in touch. Um, I just want to thank everyone so much for being here today virtually. Let me know if there are any questions.